What's up guys? We're just gonna do a little video here. We're having the AI voices talk first though. Here we go. All right, so you're ready to upgrade your e-bike game, right? Maybe snag a new battery or a more powerful charger. But then that sinking feeling hits you. The connectors don't match. Happens all the time. You're not alone. Yeah. And the first thought might be, okay, no problem. I'll just rewire this thing myself. Mm -hmm. Seems simple enough, right? Yeah. But hold on. Before you even think about grabbing those wire cutters, we need to talk about safety. Yeah, this is a deep dive with a really important message because we're dealing with lithium ion batteries here. And anyone who's been following e-bikes even casually knows these things can be a fire hazard if they're not treated right, especially when it comes to charging. Exactly. So today we're going to break down why rewiring an e-bike charger connector is not as straightforward as it might seem. We'll look at electrical compatibility best practices, and most importantly, we'll highlight why this is a job that's often best left to the pros. Right. It's better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. So let's start with the heart of your e-bike's electrical system, the battery. Yeah, the battery's the key. And the two most important things you need to know about your battery are its voltage and its current rating. Okay, so where do we find this information? It's usually printed right on the battery itself. Sometimes you'll find it in the owner's manual. Or you can check the label on your original charger. Right. So voltage and current, why are these so critical when it comes to choosing a charger? Well, the charger's output voltage has to match the battery's nominal voltage exactly. If it doesn't, you're going to have problems. Problems like? Like overcharging, which could lead to, well, you know, fire explosion. Not good. Or you could end up undercharging, and then you're not going to get very far on your ride. Makes sense. And what about the current? Okay, think of the charger's output current as the flow rate of the electricity going into your battery. You want a charger with an output current that's at least equal to or even slightly above the battery's recommended charging current. Got it. So it can keep up, but what happens if the current's way too high? Too much current can overload the battery, and that could damage it or even cause it to overheat. Definitely don't want that. Definitely not. So we've got the battery's voltage and current. What else do we need to consider? Ah, You've got to think about the battery management system, or BMS. This is like the brain of the battery. It's a circuit that protects the battery from things like overcharging, over-discharging, and overheating. Right. The BMS is essential. Yeah. So basically, we need a charger that's compatible with all of that. Mm. The voltage, the current, and the BMS. Exactly. Now, let's talk connectors. You know, that's usually the reason people are even thinking about rewiring in the first place. Right, because you've got the charger and the battery and they just don't physically plug into each other. So tell me about these different types of connectors. Well, there are a ton of them out there, each with its own pros and cons. Like what? Let's see, you've got your Anderson power poles. They're known for being pretty durable and genderless, which can be handy. Genderless meaning? Doesn't matter which way you plug them in, they'll work either way. No male or female ends. Yeah. Then there are the XT60s and XT90s. They can handle a lot of current, so you often see them on higher power systems. Okay, those are for the big boys. Pretty much. Then there are the good old DC barrel connectors. Super common, but you've got to make sure you get the right size. Right. You'll often see sizes like 5.5 millimeters on the outside and then 2.1 or 2.5 millimeters for the inside pin. And... Uh, then there are XLR connectors. Those are sometimes used on higher-end e-bikes. They can carry a lot of power, and some can even handle data, too. Interesting. And, of course, you've got your RCA connectors. They're cheap and easy to find, but not really ideal for high-power applications. Yeah, those seem a bit flimsy for e-bikes. They can be. You also might run into Hego connectors, especially on European e-bikes. They're known for being pretty waterproof. Handy. Yeah, and that's not even all of them. There are bullet connectors, JST connectors, GX16 and GX12 Rosenberger Deans, even 9-pin motor connectors, although those aren't for charging. So many connectors. It's a jungle out there. It can be, yeah. But the important thing to remember is that compatibility isn't just about the shape of the connector. It's about making sure it can handle the power and that it's designed for the intended use. Right. Using the wrong connector could have some serious consequences. Absolutely. And beyond the connector itself, you also need to consider the current rating of the connector. Every connector has a limit to how much current it can safely handle. Okay, so how do we know if the connector can handle the current? The manufacturer will usually list a current rating for the connector. You want to make sure that the new connector you choose has a current rating that's at least equal to or higher than the charger's output current. Right, so it can handle the flow. 
What about the wires themselves? Yeah, the wires inside the charger cable also have to be compatible with the new connector. You need to make sure that the wire gauge is appropriate for the current rating of the connector. Wire gauge meaning? The thickness of the wire. A thicker wire can handle more current without overheating. Got it. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Battery voltage, current BMS connector types, current ratings, wire gauges. Any other essential safety tips before we even think about rewiring? Absolutely. Before you even think about rewiring, remember the golden rule? Always use the charger that came with your e-bike or one that the manufacturer has specifically approved. Okay, so no off-brand chargers. No off-brand chargers. They might be tempting because they're cheaper, but they can be a real fire risk. You don't want to skimp on safety here. Right. So use the right charger. And what about the charging environment? Yeah, always charge your e-bike indoors in a dry, well-ventilated area. Keep it away from anything flammable and avoid extreme temperatures. So no charging in the direct sunlight? No direct sunlight, no freezing cold. And plug the charger directly into a wall outlet. No extension cords? No extension cords, no power strips. They can overheat and cause a fire hazard. And one more really important thing, never leave your e-bike charging unattended. Especially overnight. Especially overnight. Unplug it as soon as it's fully charged. And when you're plugging it in, remember to plug into the battery first and then into the wall. Okay, so safety first. But let's say someone's listening and they're thinking, I'm confident I can handle this rewiring myself. Hmm. What are the absolute non-negotiable safety steps they need to take? All right, if you're absolutely sure you want to proceed, treat this like you're handling something extremely delicate and potentially dangerous because you are. Right. First things first, unplug that charger and let it sit for at least 15 to 30 minutes. This will allow any residual charge stored in the charger's capacitors to dissipate. Capacitors meaning? They're like little energy storage units inside the charger, and they can hold a dangerous electrical charge even when the charger is unplugged. So give it time to discharge. Got it. So unplug and wait. What's next? You need a clean, well-lit workspace and the right tools for the job. That includes things like wire strippers, a soldering iron or crimping tool, a multimeter heat shrink tubing, and of course, a new connector that's compatible with your battery and charger. So basically, we're treating this like a mini electrical surgery. Pretty much. Right. Now, the single most critical thing here is getting the polarity right. You absolutely have to make sure you're connecting positive to positive and negative to negative. Okay, so how do we figure out which wire is which? Don't rely on wire colors. They can be misleading. Look for markings on the wires themselves or on the connector housing. If you're not sure, you can use a multimeter to check the voltage, but be extremely careful. Careful how? Only touch the probes to the wires when the charger is unplugged. And even then, only touch them for a brief moment just to get a reading. So double check, triple check. Absolutely, because if you reverse the polarity, it's like trying to force the wrong key into a lock. It can cause serious damage to your battery, your charger, and it could even start a fire. Got it. Polarity is key. So let's say we've got the polarity figured out. What's the best approach for actually connecting the wires? There are two main methods soldering and crimping. If you're soldering, you'll want to tin the wire ends first. Tin meaning? It means coating the exposed wire strands with a thin layer of solder. This helps to create a stronger, more reliable connection. You don't want any loose strands or cold joints. Right. And what about crimping? If you're crimping, make sure you're using the correct crimping tool for the type of connector you're using. You want a nice, tight, secure crimp so the wires don't come loose. Okay, so we've connected the wires. What's next? Now you need to insulate those connections. Heat shrink tubing is the best option. It shrinks down around the wires and creates a nice, tight seal. You can also use electrical tape, but make sure it's high-quality tape that's rated for electrical use. Right. No scotch tape. No scotch tape. Now, before you even think about plugging that rewired charger into your e-bike battery, you absolutely have to double-check everything. Make sure it's perfect. Yeah. Visually inspect everything. Look for any exposed wires, loose connections, anything that looks even slightly off. And then use your multimeter to test for continuity. Continuity meaning? It means making sure there are no shorts in the circuit and also use the multimeter to check the voltage and polarity at the new connector. You wanna make sure it matches the battery specifications. Again, do this with the charger unplugged. Unplugged, test plug and charge. Exactly, and when you do charge for the first time, stay right there and watch for any signs of trouble. Like what kind of trouble? Look for anything unusual, like excessive heat smoke sparks or strange smells. If you see anything like that, unplug the charger immediately. Better safe than sorry. We've touched on the risks throughout this deep dive, but let's spell them out clearly. 
What are the major dangers people need to be aware of when rewiring e-bike charger connectors? Well, first, there's that potential shock from the charger's internal components, like the capacitors. That's why it's so important to let the charger sit unplugged for a while before you start working on it. Right. And then the big one is... Getting the polarity wrong. That's a huge risk. Reversing the polarity can cause a rapid discharge of the battery, which can generate a lot of heat and potentially start a fire. And it can also damage the battery and the charger. Got it. So polarity is crucial. What else? Using the wrong type of connector or a connector that can't handle the current can also be really dangerous. It can cause the connector to overheat melt or even short circuit. And again, that could lead to a fire. And what about warranties? Ah, yes. Remember that making these kinds of modifications to your e-bike or your charger can void the warranties. So if something goes wrong, you might be on your own. Not ideal. Any final thoughts on the risks? Yeah, it's worth knowing that authorities like the Consumer Product Safety Commission, or CPSC, and the Office of Product Safety and Standards, or OPSS, have issued warnings about the dangers of using unapproved chargers and making unauthorized modifications to e-bikes. They don't issue those warnings for no reason. Exactly. So for anyone listening who's still considering rewiring an e-bike charger connector, our strongest advice is this. If you're not completely confident in your skills and knowledge, seek out a qualified electrician or an e-bike repair specialist. They have the training and the experience to do this safely. Right, and honestly, it's just not worth risking your safety or your e-bike over a DIY project. I think that's a great place to wrap up. You know, it's interesting to think about how many things we do in our everyday lives that seem simple, but actually have a lot of hidden complexity. Yeah, like have you ever thought about how much engineering goes into something as seemingly basic as a light switch? Or a power outlet. Yeah, we take these things for granted, but there's a whole lot going on behind the scenes to make sure they work safely and reliably. And it's the same with e-bikes. So thanks for joining us for this duck dive. Mm. Hopefully we've shed some light on the complexities and the potential dangers of rewiring e-bike charger connectors. Absolutely, and remember, stay safe out there. Always. Until next time.